President Assad's Syria remains steadfast with its attitude of resistance. Its people would never allow the sinister scheme to succeed. Iran says that Syria's security is Iran's security. Both countries are like steel and the West will never overcome their solid attitude. The Libyan terrorist Al Farjani admits that terrorists were prepared in Libya and given financial support from the Gulf countries in order to be smuggled in to Syria from Turkey. And a special cave is discovered in the Banias countryside showing aspects of very ancient human civilization. Good afternoon. President Bashar al-Assad said the scheme currently taking place is not only directed against Syria, but also against the entire region in which Syria is the cornerstone. And that is why the foreign powers are trying to target Syria to complete their plots in the whole region. The President's statement came during his meeting yesterday with the Chairman of the Iran's Shura Council's National Security and Foreign Policy Committee, Aladdin Porojordi. President Assad reaffirmed Syria's firmness in its approach of resistance and defending the legitimate rights of the people, notwithstanding the scale of cooperation between the Western and some regional countries that is aimed to make Syria change its stances. His Excellency stressed that the Syrian people would not allow this scheme to pass and reach its goals, whatever the cost may be. The talks during the meeting dealt with bilateral relations and strategic cooperation between Syria and Iran in various fields. Jordi, for his part, underscored the common interests shared between Syria and Iran. He reaffirmed Iran's continued support for, Syria, for Syria's government and people on all levels and its constant consultation with Damascus regarding any initiatives proposed for getting out of the crisis in Syria, considering this an essential issue for the success of any initiative. The Iranian official said that in the same way Iran suffered from terrorism and has overcome that difficult period, Syria is likewise able to do so, as both countries are like steel, stressing that foreign powers, no matter what level their conspiracies could reach, cannot undermine Damascus and Tehran's resistant role in the region. Afterwards, Vice President Farouk Shara received Paul Jordi and discussed with him the bilateral relations. Mr. Shara expressed appreciation of the objective stances of Iran towards what is taking place in Syria. Earlier, Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid al-Mu'allim met with Paul Jordi and discussed with him the situation in Syria and the role of the anti-resistance axis in targeting Syria's security and stability. Minister of Information Omran Zobi hailed the role played by the Iranian media via its various channels, particularly those speaking Arabic and conveying an objective image of the reality of what's taking place in Syria. During his meeting with Paul Jordi, Azabi stressed that powers of the war in Syria is a media war that is based on circulating a large amount of fabricated news items to convey an image that is contrary to the reality with the aim of misleading the Arab and international public opinion. For his part, Paul Jordi reiterated Iran's stand in support of Syria in the face of the crisis it's going through, underlining the scale of international and regional pressures practiced on Syria since the start of the crisis. In a press conference held at the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Paul Jordi stressed that the Iranian delegation's visit to Syria came within the framework of enhancing the de deeply rooted relations between the two countries. He renewed Iran's pledge to contribute to resolving the crisis in Syria, renewing his country's complete rejection of foreign interference in Syria's internal affairs, and highlighting the scope of misleading media practiced by some channels in terms of falsifying facts and fabricating news about Syria. The Syrian Arab army continues to chase the armed terrorist groups in various quarters of Aleppo in order to restore peace and security and to get rid of the crimes of the mercenary terrorists. They burged the area of Saif al from terrorists. They also stormed one of their hideouts and confiscated considerable amounts of weapons and ammunition. Security forces today clashed with a terrorist group that tried to attack a convoy 
convoy excuse me, carrying fuel oil from Homs to Al-Hasaka. The terrorists sustained several casualties, either dead or wounded. Considerable amounts of weapons and ammunition were confiscated, including automatic guns. Residents of Jurat al-Shayyah and Homs started gradually to return to their houses after clearing large parts of the neighborhood from the armed terrorist groups which wreaked havoc in the area. The armed terrorist groups have entered into Jurat al-Shayyah in Homs. They terrified the residents and blew off the shops and some residential buildings, not saving the governmental institutions. They set fire on the public establishment of roads and wreaked havoc in it. They devastated the general consumer establishment and set up barriers in the streets of the neighborhood, paralyzing movement and leaving destruction and devastation. Gradually, residents started to return to the neighborhood after calm prevailed in some parts, which have been cleared from the terrorists by the Syrian Arab army. Thank God, life is better now. We can go in and out of our house. We can now go back to our homes and settle. We were forced to go out. Calmness prevails in the neighborhood. I have a shop here and I came to check it out. As if people returned, they are on the streets. In another part of the neighborhood, there is a place for the people who were displaced from other parts of the city. The armed terrorist groups, they attacked us at night. Now we are protected by the army. There were a lot of gunfire. We were afraid and we came here. I have been here for five months. We need nothing here. Regaining security remains the main wish for the residents so that they can go back to their houses. The terrorist Ibrahim Rajab al Farjani admits that certain societies and organizations received money from GCC regimes to support Al Qaeda terrorists and to send them from Libya to Syria via Turkey. I'm from Libya, from the Benghazi city. I was born in 1993. After the events in Libya, about two weeks after the events in Libya, certain persons with contacts in the U.S., Britain, and France formed the Transitional Council in Libya. I was recruited and I received military training for one week. There were others trained to use heavy weapons. There were operating in various parts of Libya. Large planes full of weapons coming in from Qatar and the United Emirates landed. There were Qatari officials supervising the training operations. They were also offering money in order to establish an Islamic emirate. There were religious men instigating people to fight. They encouraged the young people to go into Algeria and other places. I was recruited by an organization affiliated to the Qaeda. The Syrians were trained to use various kinds of weapons and then they were sent to Syria. They gave me a Syrian passport and they took me to Antioch. A Syrian agent accompanied us to the hotels and he told us that another Syrian agent would smuggle us into Syria. They took us into a house where there were other trainees from Tunisia, Morocco and Libya. There were masked men and masked agents. They instigated us to fight the Syrian army. We were smuggled into Syria where we met with other recruiters from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. We were taken to a house in Idlib. There were various types of weapons, including rocket-propelled grenades and machine guns. The next day, we were taken to the Saraqib area through a dusty road in the mountains. Then we reached Aleppo's countryside. There, we found some armed Syrian men in a school. There were other armed men and recruiters from Kuwait, Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. The Turkish people affirmed the rejection of the policies of their government against the neighboring countries and against turning Turkey into a camp for extremist groups of terrorism. There were gatherings in Antioch against the policies of Erdogan, which were hostile to the Turkish people and the people of the neighboring countries. These policies were also responsible for the deterioration for of the economic situation in Turkey. The Turkish people denounced Erdogan's savage policy against the neighboring countries. This policy only served the Wahhabi and Western plots to divide the region. The municipality of Antioch held a seminar in which the Turkish people asserted their rejection of Erdogan's policy. 
The seminar was attended by Turkish opposition figures, writers, journalists, and representatives of the People's Republican Party, whose deputy leader Erdogan Tobrak asserted that the Turkish people rejected Erdogan's policy, which turned Turkey into a base for extremist terrorists. Antioch had also witnessed huge demonstrations against Erdogan's policy. The demonstrators asserted the Turkish people's full support of Syria and its people in the face of the plot against its unity. They also rejected turning Turkey into a training camp for the terrorists who spread sabotage and destruction in the region. The demonstrators also expressed anger against the deteriorating Turkish economy as a result of Erdogan's evil policy. The Turkish people asserted their rejection of turning Turkey into a terrorist focal point against Syria and other neighboring countries. Man's ancient arts and natural beauty are combined in the Banyas countryside in a special cave full of stalactites and stalagmites. This shows how ancient human civilizations flourished in Syria. This cave was discovered by a voluntary team from Tartus. They called it al Cave. It is very ancient. This small cave contains very beautiful rock formations and other structures named snow cataracts. It is 30 meters deep. The team continues to uncover new tunnels in the cave. The team has found a hole seven floors deep with other rock structures that are under a very low temperature. The cave has a small opening well hidden in the heart of the mountain. If it is well used, it can become a very attractive natural tourist landmark. With this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. For more news about Syria and the region, visit our website in English, www.syriaonline.sy.